Hello, I'm Dady Blake. I'm here with the League of Women Voters. This is our 2016 Voters Guide. We are at Metro East in Gresham, Oregon, and I have here with me Senator Lori Monis Anderson. Good to have you. Nice to be here. Okay, great. Is it okay if I call you Lori? Yes, Senator? please do. Okay, okay great. Uh, you are uh, running for re-election in District 25. Can you just tell us briefly what are the geographical right. boundaries? Right. Uh, district 25, the Senate District, is Gresham, Troutdale, Wood Village, Fairview, and a little bit of East Portland. Okay. So we are in District 25. We are in. Okay. Great. Um, and a little about your background. Uh, I'm a retired public health nurse and an RN, and I've spent most of my career working with at-risk families, drug-addicted moms, drug-affected babies, seniors, AIDS patients, uh, uh, refugees, um, really those, the families that uh, are very, um, that need services. Okay. All right. And now you've been senator, and, and I understand before you had another office with the, in Oregon? Yes. I uh, have been in the Senate since 2004. Okay. I was in the House uh, since uh, 2001 to 2004. Okay. And then on the Gresham Barlow School Board for 10 years in the 90s. Okay. So long-standing background as a public, in public office. Okay. Well, if re-elected, uh, what are your top priorities for your district? Uh, I've been meeting a lot of people in the district, and of course the top priority is housing, affordable okay. housing. Okay. The, when I am meeting with seniors who are on fixed incomes, they're paying five or six hundred dollars a month, and they're saying, we're going to be displaced, Lori. They are raising our rents two hundred dollars by the first of uh, December. I, I don't know where I'm going to go. Uh, one man even said, well, my son is going to reconvert his garage, mm -hmm. winterize it. So housing is a real issue, okay. and we'll need to be looking at ways that we can um, uh, give um, cities and give um, uh, counties uh, more flexibility, uh, getting rid of maybe some of the preemptions that we have so that they have more flexibility on how they want to address rents, how they want to address uh, just cause or, you know, it, it would really be nice to have renters as well as landlords getting together and talking to come up with a reasonable solution because there really needs to be flexibility in um, uh, protecting our renters because we need to be thinking about people not companies. Okay. All right. Well, that was going to be one of my questions, uh, that to, to see if you had a statewide uh, vision or approach to dealing with affordable housing and homelessness uh, in particular. And it sounds like one of the things is ending some of the, the statewide rules that we do have now or restrictions we have. Anything else? That's right. Uh, I am uh, interested in paid family uh, leave okay. and I am hoping that uh, the legislature will address that. Um, we have a lot of people that um, are on very low income and uh, they're going to work sick or they don't and they need to take care of a family member. So we'll see if we can come to terms with the business community on paid family leave. Um, that's another important issue. And I am working on child abuse issues also, okay. which I'm uh, excited to get past because we need to be protecting our most vulnerable. Sure, of course. That ties into my next question, which has to do with Measure 97. Um, of course, there's been a lot of advertisement out right now on, on, on that issue, both pro and con. If it doesn't pass, how do you see addressing the predicted budget shortfall, um, especially when it deals with social services and some yes, of the Yes. Um, as in the legislature, we're going to have to have some tough conversations uh, about our priorities. Uh, we have a process through our budget ways and means that uh, there, sub, there are subcommittees and they are going to propose alternatives to the legislators. And I am hoping uh, that then uh, as a, a, a legislature we will be able to put um, 
education first and housing first. I have um, been working with um, on tax credits. I would like us to take more, uh, really review tax credits to see if they are really, wor you know, mm -hmm. valuable at this point in time. Mm -hmm. I'm also on a task force uh, for billing for school nurses. Right now, General mm -hmm. Fund is paying for our school nurses. Okay. And that shouldn't be. So we're looking at alternatives for billing because it's really health care they're providing and, and, and right. we shouldn't be using education dollars. Right. So those okay. are a couple of things that uh, I'll be working on to help, um, but it, it is going to be tough conversations. Okay, all right, well good. Um, in the area of gun safety, this has been an, an issue certainly nationwide, but obviously one close to hearts to many Oregonians. Um, uh, what are your legis legislative priorities for gun safety, if you have them? Yes, yes. I, well, I believe that um, gun or ownership is a privilege, mm -hmm. not a right. I truly believe that uh, a person must prove that he is responsible mm -hmm. for, uh, that he or she can actually handle the responsibility of owning a gun. And I will support all legislation who will work toward that standard. Um, I chief sponsored a bill, Senate Bill 20, uh, 525 in 2015, and it is a gun violence prevention bill mm -hmm. that uh, focused on domestic violence abusers. Mm -hmm. And many of our domestic violence victims um, are killed mm -hmm. with a, a firearm, and this, is a bill that we uh, worked on and passed bipartisan support um, because it, it's it's a sensible legislation and I'm hoping that thing th that type of legislation will go through. Okay. Well, turning to a very different topic, the um, area of uh, clean air. Um, what, if anything, should the state of Oregon be doing in addition to what it's already doing to reduce carbon dioxide emissions? Well, a lot is going to depend on our transportation package. Okay. Uh, uh, there are 14 legislators working on a transportation package, and I am looking forward to hearing that report. Uh, uh, we need to approve, of course, our roads and, and, and bridges, but uh, we need sensible plans for bikeways, for or pedestrian walkways, okay. uh, for rail. But uh, uh, we need to look at alternative modes of transportation because uh, automobiles, cars, uh, really leave a big carbon imprint. Yes. Uh, and we are so well known in Oregon for the for the environment. Mm -hmm. So um, last session, of course, I supported the private and public uh, commitment to eliminating all coal-powered mm -hmm. uh, okay. electricity. And I also believe in incentives for individuals and um, businesses to to reduce carbon emission. I happen to have solar. Um, panels on my roof and I am putting a lot of electricity back into the grid sure. and uh, I was able to do that because of the incentives uh, that were given to me. So those are the types of things that I'm looking at uh, would support in trying to reduce our carbon dioxide emissions. Okay, all right. Well, believe it or not, we're, we're out of time. Uh, and uh, I'd like to thank you very much for coming uh, and um, participating today and uh, thank our audience as well. I want to remind you that uh, this is a League of Women Voters and this is our 2016 Video Voters Guide. Uh, please remember to, to vote <laughs> on November 8th or before as well as register by October 18th if you haven't already. Uh, thank you very much.